lot of power. And today we have Matt Bailey with us. What's Hello, going Matt. on? Hey, Matt. Howdy. Thank you for joining us today. I am happy to be here. Um, we are really excited to jump in and learn all things film with you. But first, I just want to get to know you on a, a fun level, too, a little bit. Um, so uh, one question for you is, what is a fun, interesting, like, talent that you might have that others, you know, might be very aware of or maybe nobody actually knows about? I was at the pool the other day with my kids and realized that I still do this thing that I've never seen anybody else do except my dad, which is I can hold water in between my hands and then lift it out of the water and shoot it, <laughs> usually at my son, um, for, for no reason at all. Just, uh, you know, you can sort of splash through your fist. Mm -hmm. Well, for some reason, I can interlock my fingers, lift the water out of the water and hold it for like long periods of time, carry it around like ammo and then fire at it by Sandra's faces. <laughs> I love that. It's completely worthless talent. But so fun. I'm sure your kids have fun with it, too. <laughs> he just gets frustrated when he tries to do it, and he's like, Dad, how do you do that? <laughs> like, you'll know when you're an adult. It's okay. One day I will pass it down, son. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> so, Matt, uh, uh, since you're an actor slash writer, right? Is that mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with acting. Um, how did you get started in acting? I literally took a course in college called Acting 101 and was enjoying myself and doing a lot of scene work and monologues and stuff. And my TA, like my, um, my section sort of professor, asked me what my major was and I was still undecided. And he was like, have you ever thought about auditioning for the theater program? And I thought, interesting. <laughs> no, <laughs> I have not. And so I sort of got my stuff together and auditioned at the end of the year, and I didn't get in. And I was the first alternate in a class of like, I think it was 12 or 15 or something like that. And I was like the next person who like did not get in. Mm. And so I spent the next couple of weeks or months sort of thinking about what I wanted to do next. And then I just had came to this realization that I was like, you know what? Screw that. And I sort of doubled down and finished all my other coursework and re-auditioned the next year to get in. So by the, by the time I got into the program the next year, I had finished all my general education requirements. So it was basically nice. like going to a conservatory at that point because I could just fill my entire schedule with art and history and music and basically like anything like that I wanted to do. So from that mm -hmm. point on, it was awesome. Nice. That does sound like a, a really cool way to go about it, where you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. You can just focus on like what you're actually interested in at that point. Totally. And what it also allowed me to do is be the first student from University of Arizona to graduate both from the acting program and the musical theater program. Oh, nice. So I actually graduated with two BFAs because I wanted to do both. That's because awesome. I really liked the music part of it, but I didn't want to be pigeonholed as a singer who can't act. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do both. And they, they did film acting as well. But they only did that through the acting program. That was definitely something that I also wanted to do. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. Um, so speaking of film, what was your first film role? Then did you do that while you were in college or once you were out? Yeah, my first film credit. I'm trying to think back now. I did a couple of student films, um, like my junior senior year of college, because there's always you know film students looking for actors and looking looking to put short films and stuff together. So mm -hmm. I think I did three or four of those, one of which was like completely improvised. Um, just a bunch of actors in a house with like a loose plot line and the camera was just kind of like roaming around and following everyone. <laughs> so it was a little, a little slapdash, like experimental project. Um, but then I did some other shorts that were a little more um, structured, uh, but I don't think I ever saw any of them, ironically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as things do when you're that age, sometimes things just don't get finished and they get left yeah. behind. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, when it came to like getting into film, like what role in filmmaking was most intriguing to you? I found it really difficult, and I feel like I'm drawn to things that are really difficult, <laughs> um, especially coming from a theater background and a, also a musical theater background where you're you know performing in much larger stages and much larger spaces. There's really an adjustment you need to make 
um, when you're off stage and in front of the camera because not only is the space so much smaller, but you know, as many of your guests have said on the podcast, that it, the camera ca- captures everything, mm-hmm. and you don't have to do much of anything. You know, if you're thinking a thing, the camera is going to pick up that you're thinking a thing, and then depending on how you edit that together. Um, the narrative can be told in a lot of different ways, even using the same shot from the actor. So it's a very, I don't know, it's such an intricate, interesting process to me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And I really enjoy the specificity and complexity that you can do in front of the camera that you can't necessarily do when you're on stage. Right. Yeah. Because you have to emote. It's, it's different because you have to... It, it's more hmm, intimate in ways. So. Yeah, and I think that there's definitely, like, a, there's honesty that you have to have in both, but there's definitely, mm-hmm. like, a relaxation that is required to be on camera, which took me a long time to settle my brain enough to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. One of my professors at one point was like, Matt, you will be on TV one day. you got to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're just like you're like John Cusack but like on a hundred cups of coffee you like you gotta slow your pulse man like you gotta bring it down Ooh. yeah they I mean theater and film are drastically different that way so that's I I feel like everyone depending on where you start struggles for at least a little bit with like toning it down or turning it up to the right level Totally. Um, so that makes sense. Um, so acting came first for you then. When mm-hmm. did you start getting into writing? I found a book one day that was about this um, this event that happened in the, like the late 1920s. And I read it and I was like, wow, this would be a great movie. I can't believe I don't know the story. And I handed it to my friend of mine and um, I was like, you should write this. You know, he was a, a screenwriter actor as well. Mm-hmm. And he handed it back to me and he's like, well, you should write it. And I just, for some reason, that idea just never occurred to me before, like, that I could even branch out and do something that I'm not really, that I hadn't just thought about doing before. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, over the next, like, five years, I just did a scene here and a scene there and started reading a bunch of screenwriting books. And mm-hmm. I eventually wrote this very long, very bad screenplay. It was an adaptation <laughs> of this book that I would probably never be able to get the rights to. Um, and, but just finishing that and getting to the end was like a very new, different feeling than anything I had done acting wise, Mm -hmm. you know, and I love acting and and the enjoyment I get out of being in a play or being on camera is a totally different sort of high for me, but Mm -hmm. finishing something that came from my brain and my fingers. And then you're like holding that stack of paper that you just made this story that didn't exist before. There's something different about that. Some, there's like a creative high that is really hard to explain. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, and I've been hooked ever since. Good. Love that. Yeah. Do you, do you think like one helps serve the other in your internal process now? Or I think that being an actor absolutely helps um, writing, particularly screenplays, because you understand character, even if you uh-huh. hadn't been looking at it from the perspective of a writer, you know, creating this entire world and the character relationships and these things, just reading all those plays and saying all those lines, you pick up how they speak. You pick up, um, you know, you study things in acting, like what does the character want? What is the character's motivation? Mm -hmm. What is the character's super objective? There's all these buzzwords that you learn Mm -hmm. in acting schools and theater programs and uh, in on-camera classes. And then when you start studying screenwriting, you have all these words like, um, structure and the three act structure and five act structure and the inciting incident and the midpoint. And <laughs> you start to realize that like a lot of these things are the same. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, what, what the character wants in your acting scene, there's also something the character wants in this arc of the entire piece, you know, and it, mm-hmm. you know, so there's these words that overlap and you start to understand that, it's not just these cliche statements like what's my motivation it's like well what does my character hope to get by the end of the story or what what is my character lacking that this story is happening to him or her for a reason like if i take 
the main character out of this story, could it happen to anybody else? Mm-hmm. You know, because in a in a really good story, that story is happening to that character for a specific reason to change them in some way. Yeah. Um, and you you know you don't really think about that when you're going in it as an actor because you're not always looking at the entire piece as a whole. You're mm-hmm. more worried about like what are my lines? What am I doing in this scene? And oftentimes you don't even see the other scenes of the movie or of the TV show. So as a writer, it's really fun because you get to sort of zoom out to 30,000 feet and look at everything from above and be like, how does this fit? How does this piece fit to this piece? And you're assembling this puzzle of all of these characters at once. And it's incredibly difficult and really fun at the same time. Yeah, that that does sound really difficult. Uh, Just from like an acting perspective, like I'm even trying to like think of that concept of like take, taking a step back and looking at the whole picture versus mm-hmm. like just being in the moment of that like one scene and that one feeling and yeah that sounds really difficult but so fun yeah michael Arndt, the writer of toy story 3 and little miss sunshine and some other stuff um has this famous story about when he was writing little miss sunshine that he would go back and do an entire draft of the screenplay just from one other person's perspective like Ooh. write a draft as one of the other characters. Mm -hmm. So by his, you know, 10th or 20th draft, he had a through line for every single character, not just the little girl or not just Steve Corral. You know, it's like Mm -hmm. all of these pieces need to fit together. All of them need a a want and a journey and it all sort of fits together as one. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, So as an actress, I'm I'm gonna steer us back towards that here for a minute (laughs) because I'm curious. Um, who are some of your favorite actors and actresses? Oh, goodness. There's so many. I love mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. I love... Mm-hmm. Um, I just like a thousand names all popped into my head all at mm-hmm. once. Like Anthony <laughs> Hopkins. I love Charlize yeah. Theron. I love... Um, oh, my God. What am I watching right now that I so much... <laughs> that, I, that I like? Every time someone asks me this, I'm like, Bleh, and I can't think of anybody... <laughs> I do the um, same thing. <laughs> I, I'm totally drawing a blank. It's <laughs> so embarrassing for an actor. Oh, um, gosh, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> what are you watching right now? Uh, I just started watching Hit and Run on Netflix that just came out. Um, I've oh, just seen the yeah. pilot. That's really fun. Nice. I don't think I've heard of that one. Um. Sounds familiar. Elizabeth Moss. We just finished watching Handmaid's Tale. The, what oh. they're asking Elizabeth Moss to do in every episode of that show is mm-hmm. just, re- like, she is remarkable. Yeah. Um, if you've had to do, you know, vulnerable scenes right in front of the camera, if there's a camera, like, in your nose, and hmm. you have to, you know, you're having a mental breakdown, essentially. She's. Mm-hmm. All, I feel like she's doing this in every single episode. Right? And I just want to, <laughs> yes. like, hug her. Because, yeah. you know, I just... It's such a brutal show on her. The journey that she has to go through. And she's so good at it. She's so good. Um, fun fact, she actually directed of... I don't remember if it's, like, a lot of the last season. Or if it's just a couple specific episodes. But she, she did direct herself... Uh, well, directed everyone, but specifically, like, um, you know, on top of having to, you know, have those moments and, and be that vulnerable, she directed mm-hmm. it too, which is mind blowing to me. She's a master. Yeah. Um, I you... love Robin Wright. I love oh. Brad Pitt. I love. Um... Gosh, there's just so. There's so many good people working right now, and the TV has been so good lately that mm-hmm. I almost feel overwhelmed with, like, like everything that I see is it's such a high level of talent right now. Yeah. Dustin Hoffman, Gene Hackman, you know, a lot of the like classic stars, Mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson, the people who, um, you know, there's just a, an intelligence and a vulnerability that so many of those stars have that Mm -hmm. it's not an accident that they became who, they became you know like robert downey jr just watching him i feel like he's just battling to keep up with his mind in mm-hmm. every role you know he just like he's thinking so fast and yeah he seems like he's always one head 
one step ahead of everyone else, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It just comes through in every, every character. Um, have you it's seen... It's just fascinating to watch. Yeah, have you seen The Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you movie. know. <laughs> That's Another like the same it thing. Just... It's just like, yeah. She... Rarely is there a word spoken, too, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what's... When it comes to, like, writing and acting, like, what's your favorite thing about those processes and why? With acting, I think it is trying to figure out the bigger picture. You know, how does this character fit into the bigger picture of the story, which is... Um, I teach acting classes every once in a while, and it's one of the things that I think actors overlook sometimes because it becomes a lot about, like, what am I doing? What am I saying? What do I want in this scene? And, it, and it, you know, the moment before, but it kind of stops there, and there's not that sort of step back and look at the bigger picture. How does this scene fit into the whole of the story? And it's hard to do because a lot of times you're just giving, you know, two pages, three pages, five pages of sides... And you don't even really understand how that scene fits into the rest of the film. But when you think about it from the, you know, director, casting director side of it, what they're watching is you playing this character and they already know the whole story. They've either written the story or they're directing the story. So they know everything else that's happening around you. And if you don't fit, if what you're doing in your acting performance isn't fitting the story that they, you know, are trying to tell it misfires you know you could be a great actor but you could be telling the wrong story in your audition right and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad actor and you know they can give you a note and you can adjust and and it's right. not always the end of the world but um a lot of young actors especially often don't understand how to look at things from a a larger perspective and like i said it's not always supplied when you're auditioning but if you're mm -hmm. able to take what you can from the page and make strong choices to try to tell that bigger story. Um, that's really like the exciting part for me it, when I'm, when I'm acting, when I'm writing, it's a little bit of the same thing, but it's just, it's a matter of trying to fit all those puzzle pieces together. You know, it's easy to write a two or three page scene. It's really hard to write 40 of those scenes that all tell a cohesive <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, engaging story without boring the reader or, or worse, confusing the reader. Um, because I've, I don't think I've ever seen a bad script make a good movie. It just, I don't think that that's a thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it can be edited into something completely different, but rarely does a bad script recover from being a bad script. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a really good point. Um, so looking sort of back um, from when you started to where you are now, have you progressed in your career just overall, um, whether acting or um, as a writer in general, as you may be expected? I think my journey has been surprising. Like, I didn't really, you know... Overall, I feel like I would have ended up being in the arts anyway, in some mm -hmm. fashion, somewhere, um, just because I didn't like anything else. And I didn't, when I was studying those things in school, I could do them, but I would only be so interested in them that I would not, I'd get bad grades or I, you know, I wouldn't finish mm -hmm. the assignment or it just would never kept my interest. But the things that I was interested in, I was all in. And I have yeah. this like insatiable curiosity for, so when I do something, I, you know, dive headlong into it. And mm -hmm. I think that that actually, I, I mean, that helps in any business, but particularly in the acting business, that's so hard to open doors and, you know, you're always looking for the next job and all of those, you know, stereotypical things that come along with the acting career. Mm -hmm. um, that it's just, it's really hard. And writing is the same way, you know, there's more professional NFL players than there are working screenwriters in the United States. That's just a fact. Wow. Yeah. You know, these are hard things to get into. Yeah. So if yeah. you don't have that 
you know, insatiable drive, this just this hunger to keep going. It's just too hard. Um, and there's that people always say, you know, if you can do anything else, um, instead do that, which I think <laughs> is a, a total crock. I think it has more, I think it has more to do with if you can do anything else and that makes you happy, that's the important yeah. part. Uh, if you are yes. happy doing other things, then absolutely go do something else. But if you are only happy being in the arts, if you are only happy creating things, mm -hmm. how dare someone tell you to go do something else? Mm. You know? So I really, like, it rubs me the wrong way when people say, you know, in these, you go to these forums or these chat rooms or these master classes and people are like, if you can do anything else with your life, go do that. What, they leave the part out about being happy, which yeah. is the whole point of, like, being on the planet, I think. So, right. Um, mm. Going back to your question, do I, ha, has it unfolded how I sort of saw it? No, I don't think so. I just sort of one thing led to another. Like I did a whole lot of theater and musicals and that sort of led me to, uh, you know, I did some national tours. I did mm -hmm. some Broadway and then I was like, you know, I want to do more on camera because mm -hmm. the theater world and the on camera world, at least in New York, have very little overlap. I mean, it's like 5% of people do both. Yeah. Um, and I was like, how do I get to be that part of that 5%? So I busted my butt and got into class again and got on camera. And I worked my butt off trying to get into to TV. And I started to get some TV shows. And I did, you know, I worked with HBO and I worked with Amazon Prime and I worked with Netflix. And I worked with a bunch of, you know, people that I was really hoping to to get on board with. And in the middle of that, I started writing. And now I'm sort of on the path doing that of trying to open doors with my writing and trying to write better and better things each time. And um, so while it seems like I'm sort of jumping all over the place, to me, it's been sort of a cohesive train all heading in one direction of just like, what's the next thing I'm going to create? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So while, while it's been unexpected, I also feel like it's been a little inevitable. Yeah. And now um, that I have kids sure. and now that I have kids, you know, I, I'm not looking to do eight shows a week you know right show after show because i want to spend the summers with my kids I, you know i don't want to spend every night in the theater as much as i love doing theater don't get me wrong but mm -hmm. um yeah so how well, did that happen like how did you end up here in minnesota like what well my son was born in new york and i was still doing a little bit of tv a little bit of theater mm -hmm. um but having kids in new york is just a whole another ball of wax it's you know <laughs> a space aside just carrying the strollers up the stairs and the subways, people, I feel like people just start looking at you differently when you're like pushing the stroller down the street and they're like, you're taking up a lot of space, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sad. That's just what's going on in my head. That's not what I, you know, <laughs> oh, people okay. are very nice in New York when they want to be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm talking crap about New York. I love New York so much. Um, <laughs> but I honestly, since I came out here with my family, I have not missed it for a day. And Oh, wow. I'm the sort of person that I'm going to figure out how to be happy wherever I am. And I, if that means I spend more time writing instead of booking TV shows, like that's what I'm going to do. Because that, if I don't spend this creative energy that I have each day, I get very cranky. And so it, it just has to come out somehow. And, and writing has been the thing that I've latched on to, to um, satisfy that itch. Yeah. Well, you know, because there we, are, you know, there are acting opportunities here and they come up um, usually not in the middle of winter. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, but writing you can do all the time. You just need a keyboard or a pen, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And we both saw your uh, film Only Dance Can Save Us. Yes. Oh, nice. It was excellent. Um, kind of rolling off of that. <laughs> Uh, of all the roles you've played in the past, uh, what have been your favorites? I liked playing um, that role a lot. You know, it was when I got the sides, it was that scene near the end of the movie when he's sort of talking about um, it's a scene where he's sort of apologizing for the sins of his father. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I remember reading the audition sides and just understanding it immediately i'm like oh i know what i know what this is um and that's like like i said that's an exciting moment as an actor when you 
feel like not only you understand exactly what's on the page, but that you feel like you've had enough experience in your life to be able to pull that off Mm -hmm. um, convincingly. And so playing that role was a lot of fun. Um, There's been a lot of roles that I've really enjoyed. You know, one of my big first, one of my first big jobs was doing Boardwalk Empire and you show up. What? um, Hang on. What? uh, What? (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh. Last season, uh, last season of Boardwalk Empire, you can uh, which a very fiery episode where there's a lot going on. Um, you can spot me in there. Um, but just being on set and like feeling so much joy and so much pressure at the same time, and then just walking onto set, the set that I watched on TV, you know, that I was familiar with. It was the first job that I did that I had watched and that I had really wanted to be on. Like this is a dream role dream show to be on and to walk out there with you know michael shannon and shay and and um and stephen graham and all these guys and just like standing in the same room with them and i was like holy right. <laughs> hell don't mess this up you know <laughs> um and it was nerve it was nerve-wracking and it was amazing and it was too short and uh you know we shot a couple of days and and now i'm on you know i'm on film forever in that show and it it was such an exciting terrifying moment um Mm -hmm. but also like a first step towards um sort of a bigger arena that i wanted to play in Mm -hmm. sounds exhilarating it was it was really an amazing experience it sounds like it that's phenomenal it's funny because if i had if i that had happened to me now I have I have more experience being in high pressure situations like that, um, mm-hmm. and I feel like there are there are definitely some things I would have done differently, and some mm-hmm. people I would have wanted to talk to more, and and I would have been a little more not outspoken on set, but there's definitely some I would have tried to make a, a few more connections in that room, but mm-hmm. I was just so dumbfounded and like happy to be there that i just like Mm. sat in my room watching the world cup soccer game just like waiting for them to knock on my door and be like we're ready (laughs) um so i have a lot of great memories from that that was a lot of fun no kidding um well that sort of leads me to wonder um you know you've been on on big sets like that what are some films or maybe even tv shows that have really been the most inspiring or influential for you up to this point um i mean watching lost when it first aired you know you got one episode a week and everyone Mm -hmm. was at the water cooler talking about it like Mm -hmm. that's just not an experience that i think we're going to be able to have again Mm -hmm. just with all the streamers and there's so much content now that nothing's really even that big anymore um, because everyone is so scattered watching all, all kinds of different stuff um, and Game of Thrones, I guess, was like popular, but there was a whole percentage of the population that just doesn't have interest in dragons and fantasy and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was something about watching Lost that it was like, it felt like every single person in the world was like following Jack and following, you know, <laughs> wondering what was going to happen with the had the hatch. And that was just so exciting and such good writing. Um, so that, you know, and then like, I remember going back and watching all of Boardwalk Empire again and and Mm -hmm. it being a, you know, a period, very expensive show. um, You would, you just wonder like how many of those are they still going to make it? Because it's just such a risk to spend that much money doing something. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And while companies like Netflix have seemingly endless bankrolls, it, it seems like it's more about making 20 shows for, you know, a hundred million rather than one show for 500 million. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um, so it's just, you know, the, the future of streaming is so unknown. Um, but we'll definitely never have another show like friends. We'll never have another show like lost. We'll never have a show like, um, or even, you know, stuff from the fifties and sixties where everyone was watching three channels. Um, so, you know, lost was like, one of those shows for me. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, stopped watching after 
Michelle Rodriguez's character died. So, <laughs> Aww. and that's the thing is like people love these characters so much, and then like yeah. they would just knock somebody off, and everyone was like, "What? Yeah, how dare you? It's like how, I can't believe how that's is not that Penny's how she boat. went. Yeah, it was like, come on. <laughs> and all the Hollywood po- politics too at that time. It was just kind of interesting because um, everyone was into it, right? Like you said, so. Um, is there really something you want to do now more than ever now that you kind of have your hands in both like acting and writing? So like, is there something you'd like to do there or both? I mean, I am always interested in a challenging, um, interesting acting role that I don't think that'll ever go away, but I definitely mm-hmm. have, um, some writing goals now as well. Um, in terms of finishing a couple of features that I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Um, one of which is in pre-production right now. Um, so can't say too much about that, but <laughs> I'm hoping that, that uh, we find a lead actress and that uh, we can see that story up on screen one day. That's definitely a goal of mine. Well, that kind of leads me to the next question pretty well. Um, <laughs> so outside of what you can't say, um, you know, what, what is next for you? Like what, what's well, your next there, big thing? There is a script called lineage, um, that is about an author who goes home to look for her missing mother and discovers a lot more than she, uh, bargained for, mm. um, that is currently casting right now. And it is a feature shooting in upstate New York. That is very exciting. Um, and then I'm just working on a couple other uh, scripts right now. I have a script that I've sent out to a couple of contests that um, so far the, the feedback's been positive. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to hear um, about that. And then uh, I'm about 60 or 70% through a new feature script that I'm very excited about. That uh, wow. is a biopic about a real person. Um, that That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> because I'm still figuring it out. Um, yeah. That's really exciting. Um, yeah. So it sounds like you're really more focused on on your writing right now versus acting, or it's, do you? Yeah. You know what? It, oh, yes, I agree. But no, I, I'm also in a place as an actor that I, you know, I'm still doing auditions that come in when when they sound intriguing or mm-hmm. there's no conflicts or whatever. Um, but I'm at a place where I'm finally like confident with my ability mm-hmm. that. If I don't, you know, go to acting class all year long, that I'll still remember how to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And now I'm trying to sort of figure out how to do that with writing. Uh (laughs) Ah, yeah. Get to a place where I don't think everything I write is garbage. (laughs) That's Um, part of the creative process. Part of the learning process, right? (laughs) Oh boy. Writing. So yes, I am. I am at the point in my acting where I feel like I'm not hot garbage all the time. (laughs) So well, that's good. Right direction, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. (laughs) That's huge project progress for any actor so (laughs) and writer (laughs) and writer um well matt where can people find your work or follow you like social media this is plug time sure uh you can go to mattbailey.info i am at at just matt bailey on most platformy things um (laughs) yeah there's not a ton of info up there but i post every once in a while um, with what's going on and uh, either in the fall or winter, I think I'm going to be doing um, an acting workshop um, oh, over at uh, Film North. So keep an eye out for that. Very exciting. Otherwise, I'm just going to be in town creating stuff. Love that. Yeah. Um, so the, the really big question, Matt. Yes. Is what do you want people to remember most about you? Whether it's people you've worked with or people when they're watching one of your films. Um, I work, you know, it took me a long time to be able to say this, but I work really hard and I'm, (laughs) I'm proud of that. And I wish that more people kept going and focused on doing the thing instead of complaining about the thing. It's really mm-hmm. hard. And I'm not saying that, you know, you don't need a community to, uh, to lean on and to complain mm-hmm. to, but the more that you can 
not blame living in a smaller city away from LA or New York, the more you can not blame somebody else getting an opportunity that you didn't, the more, you know, the less you can blame somebody who's taller or better looking for the role that you want it. You know, if you can just get away from making excuses about you not getting the thing and just like keep going after it, mm. you know, get better, keep doing the thing. Eventually things are going to work out for you. I um, like that. And that's yeah. sort of been, yeah. I don't know if I was just born that way or if I developed that over time, but you just mm -hmm. got to keep, just keep fighting people. Just keep working at it. Just make, make the thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's really good because now in Minnesota, like we're building off of that too. Uh, especially with the production tax incentive now. And Absolutely. Things like that, that are building out of the community that exists. So, um, yeah, I think it's a positive way to look at things like no mm -hmm. matter where you're at, you're right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, and just support each other and listen to each other and try to be inclusive and you know, all ships ride with, you know, you know, you know what they say that all ships ride with the tide, you know? Mm -hmm. So if, if, you know, we're able to get some more productions here, if we're able to get a little industry boom with what's going on in Duluth and Catalyst Festival and all these things, if it's able to create more jobs, you know, anything that we can do to help this community, um, everyone should be out fighting for. Hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because there are creative, such talented creatives in every industry here um, that I don't think they should need to go other places for those jobs. But it's about building an infrastructure that is able to sustain professional work and that that's a hard thing to develop and we are on our way to doing that so just support each other and keep going i yeah. love that message yes um well matt thank you so much for your time uh, we Absolutely. really appreciate you joining us and My getting pleasure. to learn about you um and until next time everyone thanks for hopping on and listening to film in minnesota Keep making stuff. Woohoo!